Deepak, anything that you want to share, your experience uh, at Lanco or industry in general in terms in of... In fact, uh, uh, what I uh, experience is that uh, resistance to change comes from basically three or four elements which we experienced. One is that ignorance, that they are not able to appreciate the problem and they don't want to understand the problem. So closing the eyes, you know, that is one main reason. Second is the anxiety, fear of being unable to cope up with the new situation. So that is the second thing which we experienced. Mistrust, they always see that the management has got some hidden agenda. Why they, that's why they are bringing this change and this may lead to some sort of uh, operational hazards for us. And the frustration, the change of losing power or the social arrangements uh, is another factor which why the people are not willing to change. And to overcome these kind of situation, what we are trying to do is defining the need, why we need to change. We communicate with people why we need to bring that change and why is more important for them to really give their best to be part of that and involve them in the change process. So we plan the change, we involve them, we engage them, and then on the top of it, we try to facilitate and support. If in case they are finding some difficulties, they come across some issues in uh, implementing the change, we are there as a mentor, as a counselor, as a coach to make that change happen. So we are always stand by along with them. And lastly, we try to negotiate and come to some agreement in case there are some trivial issues, which is really uh, not gelling with the understanding or they find it difficult. So we try to negotiate and rearrange the things to meet the requirements. Thank you. So that's why we try to bring in the change to more stickiness kind of thing, whereby they themselves get involved, they take the ownership of the change process. No. Thank you. So you know, it will also be interesting to hear any examples, stories of, uh, of what's worked and not worked. So uh, Krish, is there anything that uh, comes to your mind of, of what's been difficult to drive or, or, or an example or a story of uh, change that's been very, very successful in, in your experience? No, I think there have been many examples. I think one is, uh, you know, I think there is always there are lots of change happening. Yeah. Uh, well, what we really forget is uh, to really look at how in organizations, I mean, uh, Siddiqui Saab said, when we really look at it, I think HR does not really think. You know, sometimes we're really too much process oriented and we just go and implement things. Uh, what we've got to stop and look is really what is needed to really grow organizations. Yeah? And one of the key things that we failed to notice, uh, and Thiru also mentioned, is the emotions of people the heart, the emotions of people, that's what is critical in every aspect of the, the process. So one last word of advice is for HR people is that I think we've got to really be at the forefront. We've got to really be sensing what is happening around. We should not be reactive. And most often what happens is that we tend to be reactive. Something happens, we say, what do we do? But if you're really much more at the front, uh, much more talking to consumers, customers, seeing what's happening, uh, being much more clued into what is going to happen and at least sensing head on what's going to be coming, I think we'll be much more able to manage the kind of change. And second, don't be too clinical in how we do things. Look at the emotions of people and how we can build emotions in the various cycles of growth of organization. That's, that would be a critical thing to do. No, thank you. But I'll hand over to the, uh, to the MC for first. Yes, Alice, there's one particular question, somebody. Two. Yes, that's the lady there in the blue shirt. Please identify yourself and who you want to pose that question to. Yeah. Uh, hi, my name is Kim Frenzen. Um, we're a change management company from the Netherlands, the land of Philips, based in India since eight years. I actually have a question for you, Mr. Shankar, and the tagline of our company is, if we don't change in time, time will change us. That means we not only teach people how to enjoy or adapt, be adaptive towards change, but we also teach them how to uh, anticipate change in the future because once you can predict the future with the possible changes that might happen, you can pave the path more efficiently. So how do you do that with, uh, within Philips? So I think uh, there are two ways we need to do it. Get people to meet customers a lot more, get them to go on, talk to customers and see what is happening, see what competition is doing. So at least that gives them what customers are really looking at and they get some new insights. And second, I think, is expose them to different forums, different areas where you see what are the big, big trends and changes in the industry. Uh, I think from there you can really identify these are the two or three trends and see what we need to do to be proactive. So I would just keep these two as points to do. Uh, 
see HR leading some time of change. I don't think it really permeates down to the students. Each company and each HR leader talks about the talent they need and the ta talent they are not getting. But uh, the fact is that currently all the academies, uh, all the B schools are led by academicians and seasoned acad uh, academicians and researchers. Do you think there is a bigger role of HR leaders such as yourselves in the organizations? We talk about integrations, but uh, the question to ask right now is how many students are there in this HR rich uh, place receiving guidance and knowledge from you guys? Do you think there is a bigger role for HR leaders to be a part in uh, academics and for the upcoming HR professionals rather than just when they join the company and you teach them, then you go to the educa educational era, uh, educational domain and teach them there? National HRD Network <coughs> since 2004 has been influencing the B-School uh, curriculum uh, to a great extent contributing from my experiences what should be taught. That's the base level uh, contribution com coming from the senior HR fraternity. And then uh, we have got this tremendous effort going on from National HRD Network and also from corporates to link with uh, B schools. And to a great extent, we are going there to share our uh, yes. uh, knowledge and capabilities and experience. But to a great extent, uh, for you, my simple advice will be that you'll have to identify opportunities in this challenging world for your own self-development and hang on to it. Because expecting HR leaders to come and do and all that, in my thinking, that model is not going to work in future. We are doing it, I am sharing with you a factual situation. But from uh, your development perspective, I think wherever you find opportunities or create opportunities for your self-development, that will be a better model. Thank you, Mr. Siddiqui.